This is the original DVD art for Donnie Darko that makes me want to vomit. <laughs> Favorite is uh, a film that I really love. I love this film for so many reasons, but particularly the performances of the three actresses and their chemistry together. How good to see you've returned from hell. I'm sure you shall pass through it one day. I believe Robbie Ryan is the cinematographer and the way that uh, Yorgos and he used fisheye lenses. It was risky, but they definitely made it work. Yeah. What else do we got? The Neon Demon. The way he photographs Los Angeles in this movie and the way he uh, satirizes modeling industry and it's kind of terrifying and it's hilarious but it's this really, really demented dark comedy and it's um, disturbing but kind of poignant at the same time in terms of uh, what young women end up doing to themselves to try to compete in this sort of youth-obsessed, beauty-obsessed culture. Let me see what else we got. I love Interstellar. It's one of my favorite Christopher Nolan films. It's just The way he used miniatures is just extraordinary. Very few people are able to do that, and I love the way Chris is um, embracing kind of the, the old school analog technology, and he does everything real, and few people can do that, but I love that he's holding on to that kind of old school, old fashioned uh, nuts and bolts filmmaking. Well, here's a little film that I, I wrote uh, for uh, Tony Scott. Where's the money? I don't know. The most important thing I learned from Tony is screenplay development. He was constantly polishing and refining the screenplay with me. It taught me discipline that I'm still learning about getting the script just right so you're, you're not having to rewrite and change things on set as little as possible. He worked so fast because he was doing so much with this movie and there were so many characters and so many uh, setups and action set pieces. It was just a life-changing experience and even at the end of Domino, I did a, a tribute to True Romance. <laughs> Witness, Peter Weir, uh, it's a beautiful film. It's one of Harrison Ford's best performances. Thanks. I had the time of my life making this film and it's all because of this guy right here. Um, <laughs> he made it happen. This is an epic Los Angeles crime saga. I learned definitely don't take your movie to a film festival until it's finished. And that was a very difficult time, um, but time heals wounds. But I don't think I would change anything because we got invited into competition and it's the proudest moment of my career is getting Dwayne on the red carpet in competition at Cannes. The whole movie was about 9-11 uh, uh, anxiety. So the movie's meant to be cathartic and it, it's a very angry film, but I think the comedy and the, and the, the release of anger and energy that the movie presents is, is more, digestible now and hopefully we'll see more of this. I think we're um, looking to revisit that film in a really exciting way and you know, we'll see. We will see. Magnolia yeah. is one of my favorite films of all time. Sidney Barringer jumps from the ninth floor rooftop. His parents argue three stories below. Her accidental shotgun blast hits Sidney in the stomach as he passes the arguing sixth floor window. That prologue is just one of the greatest things I've ever seen. And the whole film is just this emotional rush of energy. It's funny, it's heartbreaking, it's beautiful. Uh, and then the rain of frogs at the end is one of the great set pieces I think I've ever seen. Barry Lyndon, I recently saw a 35 millimeter print of this in, in Los Angeles and it just gets better every single time I see it. It's the most beautiful film ever made aesthetically. The photography, the NASA lenses that he used um, to shoot in candlelight, candles with like three triple wicks to, to boost the fire and um, get an exposure. It's just, everything about it is just extraordinary. It's funny. It's devastating. Papa, if I die, will I go to heaven? It's just um, a work of art on every single conceivable level. Uh, Zodiac is a one of a kind. The way he, he uses time, it strings you along and it pulls you into this web of obsession. The obsession that the characters feel over finding the identity of the Zodiac Killer and how it just eats them alive. What do you mean there's no evidence? You have him seen with the ciphers, the military boot prints, the same size shoes and gloves, the most dangerous game, the Zodiac watch, the background with school children, the, the misspellings of Christmas, the bloody knife. All circumstantial. Do, do you remember the first time you, you've met him? He was just coming out of Columbia 
uh, university for t- two years in college, and he still had like kind of the spiky hair, and he had like a goth chain belt on, and he was like kind of like goth LA kid. He came in for a meeting on on Donnie Darko, and within 30 seconds, I'm like, "Yep, you got the part." Who is he going to kill, Donnie? I can see right now. <laughs> he was doing all sorts of little things that I wasn't even aware of what he was doing because I was so consumed with the um, responsibility of directing my first film that I was just like trying to manage everything, but he was doing all these little things. That was a, a, a transformative performance. And I think he was a com- completely a new actor and he, uh, he like became this, this great actor over the course of um, that whole experience. There are other things that need to be taken into account here, like the whole spectrum of human emotion. You can't just lump everything into these two categories and then just deny everything else. Oh, Memento, yes, Christopher Nolan. Um, We were at Sundance together in 2001 and Christopher uh, won the screenwriting award. You don't even know my name. Teddy. That's because you read it off a fucking picture. You don't know who you are. All the distributors that year were scared of this movie and they were scared of Donnie Darko. They thought they were both too cerebral and so, the company that, that financed Memento went on to self-distribute it. Our movie was orphaned and no one would distribute it and we were just sitting there. And then the executive producer of Memento, Aaron Ryder, brought Donnie Darko in to screen for the New Market people and he strategically invited Christopher and his wife to the screening. And they raved about the movie to the New Market executives and convinced them to buy it. And then we were off to the races and we got a, a theatrical little distribution deal for right after Halloween. And Christopher Nolan had a lot to do with that and kind of saving my career. 12 Monkeys, made in 1995. I saw this movie and it blew my mind. It's probably my favorite Bruce Willis performance ever. And again, Madeline Stowe is is extraordinary and a very underrated actress. You don't remember assaulting a police officer for several hours. Why are they chained? Why are they chained on me? This is based on La Jetée, the short film by Chris Marker. Rien ne distingue les souvenirs des autres moments. Ce n'est que plus tard qu'ils se font reconnaître à leur cicatrice. I've always been a fan of horror movies, but I'm actually really squeamish. Anything with a lot of violence and a lot of just people suffering constantly, I, I can't watch it. So if a horror film is going to work for me, it has to have a great story, it has to be artful, and it has to have emotion, and it has to kind of do more than just be trying to make you feel terrible. But Sam Raimi is an, is an artist. I love the Evil Dead films. They are art. Uh, they are cinema. <laughs> We have Back to the Future, which is obviously a film that changed my life when I saw it as a young kid. Um, This is one of the great screenplays ever. It's a joy to watch. Everything about it just made me want to be a filmmaker. I love Enter the Void. I love Gaspar Noé. Uh, His work is very bold, and he's a great artist. I would love to see him kind of uh, do more music, or musical oriented films. Another Peter Weir film, The Truman Show, yeah. featuring a great performance by Jim Carrey. Oh. Do we have Kiss Me Deadly around here? Kiss Me Deadly is a great LA film. Robert Aldrich, film noir, was condemned upon its release by the Key Falver Commission. And in Southland Tales, I showed it to Dwayne Johnson because his performance as Boxer Santeros and Jericho Kane, his dual performance as the schizophrenic protagonist, mm-hmm. is very much partially based on Ralph Meeker's performance in Kiss Me Deadly. So Boxer Santeros with amnesia is studying Ralph Meeker in Kiss Me Deadly and kind of doing his voice and his sort of machismo film noir. And it was great to give Dwayne something to study because he's a great studier and he's a great listener and he, he's very focused and he can do very uh, precise work. And he learned all that really coming up through being a professional wrestler and delivering monologues and you know doing all these really intricate acrobatic moves that is like the best training for an actor i mean very few people can do that kind of stuff victor fleming john ford howard hawks yeah this is a good little section here rear window to me is just like a groundbreaking film in terms of its craft and its technique and and the restrictions put upon the narrative construction of it in the sense of it all taking place in one apartment courtyard. The camera really never leaves the point of view 
of uh, Jimmy Stewart's apartment and has one of the, the great love stories as well, I think. A very poignant love story. He doesn't sound like much of a detective. Oh, don't be too hard on him. He's a steady worker. Hitchcock had like great action filmmaking kind of chops. Like he could really stage, I mean, to think of Hitchcock working um, with like a big Christopher Nolan action film budget, I mean, what he would have done, you know, that would have been would just be extraordinary. Crazy. I watch a lot of TV. I've been studying TV. I love all of Twin Peaks, but, but season three, uh, The Return, is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. What about the FBI? I am the FBI. David Lynch wrote and directed every episode. He co-wrote every script with Mark Frost. Mm. It features the, the greatest performance ever by Kyle MacLachlan. No one's ever done something on this level before. Cinema and television are merging in a new way. So you have something like Twin Peaks The Return, which is really like an 18-hour film. And then you have you know the Marvel Cinematic Universe of like 22, 23 films that it's kind of like a big TV series, right? It's a bunch of different directors doing the different movies and stuff, but then you have something like Twin Peaks where it's one director, two writers doing everything, the same the same crew, the same everyone, and they're shooting it like a movie. So we're in a new, uh, new era of cinema and television kind of invading each other's space. And um, people have viewing parties now if they have a nice home theater and they watch Game of Thrones. That's kind of a cinematic experience. So I don't know, I think we can, we can still have our cinema and our television and they can blend together. That's a good conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>